am Alexa Serene's here with another reaction. So today we're going to continue with our Golden Girl series, this time with season four, episode 19, titled Till Death Do We Volley. As always, if you're looking for the full length reaction to this episode or any of my other content, you can find that on Patreon and the link will be in the description below. And if you cannot support us on Patreon, that's completely fine. You can support us directly here on YouTube by liking this video, commenting, and subscribing. So without further ado, let's get into our episode. Girls, nope. you will never guess who I just got off the phone with. Trudy McMahon, your best friend from high school. She's coming to Miami for your high school reunion. How do you know this? <laughs> Sophia, that's incredible. You must have ESP. Yes, no, I have a phone extension in my bed. <laughs> Ma, how many times do I have to tell you not to listen in on my conversations? About twice a year. <laughs> You do sound excited, Dorothy. Well, I am, I am, but mostly it's about seeing Trudy again. Oh, a girl never had a better friend than Trudy McMahon. <laughs> well, damn, what about the girls that are sitting oh, nothing. My right next to you guys? Up on me. <laughs> right while you were lying. Why? Why do you say I'm lying? A girl never had a better friend than She Trudy doesn't remember. McMahon. Somebody here doesn't remember prom night 1946. Why, what happened? I don't know, I'm that somebody. <laughs> now, I think what Ma's referring to <laughs> is a little practical joke that Trudy played on me. You know, all of us on the tennis team decided that we would wear our tennis whites to the prom. Well, I showed up and I was the only one. Oh, oh, your date must have been horrified. No, oh, her brother was a really good sport. <laughs> Trudy and I played a lot of practical jokes on each other. It was all part of a happy, healthy rivalry. When's Trudy coming? Uh, a week after next. Uh, oh, which reminds me, I have to rush. To do what? I do. Tennis lessons. I figure if she's going to be here, we ought to have a nice, quiet game. Oh, that's sweet. And a lot of crap. I'm going to mop the court with her. <laughs> oh, my. Looks like our Dorothy still holds a grudge. Uh-huh. Don't, don't mess with grudge. Dorothy. We Sicilians are good at that. That and holding a grudge. Sophia, you the same thing. a grudge twice. Hey, if you're good at something, you brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to my reunion. I'm making Scandinavia's oldest and most traditional appetizer treat, cheese and crackers. Okay, good. Cheese and crackers, Rose. Not eggs gefluffy. <laughs> <laughs> Ham and gouda hoggins. <laughs> Pigs and a Sven gluten. <laughs> No, but you sure know how to make a girl's mouth water. Oh, those are real things. Oh my god. Oh, Trudy. It has Darby. been. Oh. <laughs> it's been so long. Too long. Boy, you look. It's been so long. <laughs> I know, and you, you look exactly the way you did at our high school graduation. Of course, rumors were that you were three months pregnant. Ooh. I want you to meet my husband, Jack. You didn't tell me you had such a handsome husband. Didn't tell you he was rich, either. Oh, Ooh. that's my Trudy. Oh, you haven't lost your sense of humor <laughs> or those pesky 10 pounds. <laughs> Mrs. Petrillo, is that you? No, it's Jane Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give us a hug. Oh, Trudy, it's so good to see you again. Honey, I want you to meet my roommates, Rose and Blanche. It's a pleasure. Oh, Dorothy's told us so much about you. <laughs> All good, I hope. Well, actually, Sit. she... <laughs> We had such a great time yeah. back in high school. Like the time you and Trudy ran against each other for class oh, treasurer. Oh. <laughs> you know, back in St. Olaf, I ran for president of the Bull Castration Club. What? Why? Why is that a thing? There is no sound in this world sweeter than a bull's moo as it climbs an octave. <laughs> Did you win? No, lost by a hair. 
you after that loss, Dorothy. You just picked up the pieces and went on, just like you did after Stanley ran off with that stewardess. Oh, Boy, I envy you your shit. Gumption. And I, your breast implant. <laughs> this may not be my place, but you two hardly sound like old friends. Yes, you guys sound like Blanche old enemies. Right. We should be more positive. Dorothy, you look wonderful. Uh, the left one turned out nice. Dorothy! Oh, come on, Rose, I'm just kidding. They're both practically the same size. <laughs> How about giving me a hand in the kitchen? Were they like that in high school, Mrs. Petrillo? Oh, no, her breasts were actually a lot smaller back then. <laughs> really? Well, that's that. How does it feel to have your butt whipped? Well, sometimes I find it strangely <laughs> <true. laughs> No, that's not what they're talking about. You were talking about yes. <laughs> Trudy, how about if tomorrow we play a real game? You know, something that requires real skill. You mean like midget ice bowling? What? I'm talking about tennis, you doofus. <laughs> Well, aren't you afraid of being humiliated on the tennis court, Dorothy? Me? Humiliated? I think you forget, Trudy. We have to wear tennis dresses. You're on, you pathetic middle-aged cow. I am looking forward to it, you miserable sack of cellulite. But you know well, what? Did I tell you that Larry Krauss called the other day? Really? Yeah. Did he ever get married? Three times. Actually, four, if you count Victor. You know what I like, though, is that you could tell that even though they're, they're being mean to each other, that's kind of their banter. I think it would be weird for them to do anything else. <laughs> yeah, I don't get tennis. Can you believe it? Two women competing like that and there's not even a man at stake. <laughs> Are we going to play or do you want to forfeit? No way. No, Dorothy's born act doesn't know the meaning of the word forfeit. And she's a teacher, too. <laughs> Japanese are ahead of us. Oh, gosh. I'm gonna kill you, Trudy. Oh, do you really think she can make a comeback? I'm sure she can. Dorothy's running Trudy all over the court. Oh, Trudy tripped. And she's not getting up. You think something's wrong? I think she's fainted. I hope it's not anything worse. It is. I've seen that look before. You don't think there are two things in this world as a silly She can't. She's not when dead. When sticks to a wall, it's done. When a body sticks to cement, it's dead. She's dead? <laughs> Dor Dorothy killed her rival? No. She can't die. Why did it have to happen this way? She's I dead? A murderer. Now, I will not hear any more of that nonsense. It was a freak occurrence on a tennis court. That is all. Oh. She's right, Dorothy. You did nothing wrong. Technically, I mean, nothing that would hold up in a court <laughs> of law. <laughs> she was the most energetic, alive person I ever knew. Not anymore. At the center, Dorothy, we teach acceptance. <laughs> in life, there are some things that are inevitable, and you just have to accept them. Yeah, she is so. right, Dorothy. I know because I've been there myself. You killed your best friend too, Blanche? No! Sorry, Dorothy. I remember I was a blossoming belle who had just won the Little Miss Magnolia pageant. Uh, Blanche, before you start, realize I am very vulnerable now and in no mood to hear a story about you and some <laughs> Yahoo cracker with four first names pawing at each other under a magnolia tree. <laughs> oh. Well, pardon me, Dorothy, but we can't all come from places as socially acceptable as Brooklyn. <laughs> anyway, I was about eight years old when I first met Kathy Lee on the playground. We became fast friends, just as thick as Louisiana blackstrap molasses on a steak of Johnny Cakes as high as an elephant's knee. On a riverboat flowing down the Mississippi Delta. Finish the damn story, <laughs> Anyway, it was at a southern seafood fry that I proudly dragged Kathy Lee over to meet my folks while my mama took one look at Kathy Lee and forbade me ever to see her again. Why? Because her mother was not in the Daughters of the Confederacy. 
Blanche, why is this a story of I really don't get it. Oh, because years later, to get back at me, Kathy Lee slept with my daddy. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was something I had to accept. <laughs> Mama accepted it, too. <laughs> Along with a brand new Cadillac Eldorado for her birthday. <laughs> Reunion will get your mind off of it. That people should be coming in a couple of hours. The party, oh no! The party. They might just end up totally thinking forgot. that there is no way I can face those. She okay, killed can. her. You're all friends of Trudy's. You can console each other. It'll help you to cope. Maybe you're right. Maybe this is just. Unless what everybody I'm started thinking that yeah, she killed her done. on purpose. Oh, of course, mm. breaking the news will not be easy. Want my advice? Wait a couple of hours before you do. Stuff like this could put a real damper on happy hour. <laughs> Listen, Rose, remember, mum's the word. Dorothy will break the bad news in due time, okay? Excuse me, has anyone seen Dorothy? She said hello and then disappeared. Is there a problem? No, no problem at all. Everything's fine. It's not like anyone died or anything. <laughs> Golly. to see everyone but where's Trudy she did she hasn't seen me in years I can't wait to see the look on her face <laughs> you could wait six months it wouldn't change <laughs> it's been almost two hours we can't keep up this charade somebody has got to go in there and get Dorothy to come out and break the news picture it Sicily 1852 <laughs> ma I am in no mood and besides you weren't alive in 1852 <laughs> We can't learn from history. It was mid-century in a disillusioned Italy. Look to the House of Savoy for leadership. Giuseppe Garibaldi, our courageous leader, and not a bad dresser thought, let's regain some national pride and jump into this Crimean War thing. <laughs> of course, there was a big kickoff party at Giuseppe's beach house, and everyone came. Coincidentally, this was also the night his wife, Rosa, hid her sexual peak. <laughs> Ma, I am in here because of guilt. This is not a story about guilt. <gasps> this is a story about being a bad hostess. <laughs> While Rosa had Giuseppe in the bedroom with his saber around his ankles, Jesus. 200 <laughs> hungry guests was strip-searching mice for a piece of cheese. <laughs> So what's your point? That Rosa and I throw bad parties? Yes. That's my minor point. <laughs> my major point is that like Rosa, you're screwing around in the bedroom when there are important things to do outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. That makes sense. I mean, you went the long way around, but <laughs> that actually makes sense. Look, pussycat, your friends deserve to know about Trudy. Yes. And they'll understand. Because they are your friends. Oh, Ma. Ma, thanks. Everybody, everybody, can I have your attention, please? Uh, I know I've been a, a bit scarce tonight, but there is a reason. Something tragic happened this morning. Oh, Ma, I need your help. Oh, my sure, God. sweetheart. Trudy's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You don't have to say it like that, though. Please, everybody, everybody. It happened this morning when we were playing tennis. Trudy's heart just couldn't take it. I, I, I'm so sorry that I dragged her out on the court and made her run back and forth so hard. I wish it had been me instead of her because it's all my fault. Welcome to the Dorothy Kill Trudy party! Oh, Dorothy! Someone's late. Dorothy will have to give her speech all over again. <laughs> what should be Trudy if she's not even dead? Hi, everybody! <laughs> Trudy? I don't believe this. I don't believe this. Is that you? In the flesh. Yeah, but I can't believe... I can't believe you're really here. Well, well, I don't understand. How did you... Oh, it was all staged, Rose. A patented Trudy McMahon practical joke. Oh, yeah, well, that's fine. Well, I don't find that one bit. That funny. is very cruel. cruel Trudy. Well, come on, it was just a practical joke like we did in high school. 
Some of the things we did in high school are not necessarily appropriate when we we're adults. Like staying up all night, carousing around, dating every other man you meet. Girl! I'm losing credibility here. It's a little right? bit. It's a little bit. Leave it to me. In a few minutes, I'll have her beaming from air to air. She'll be afraid. Okay, this is a joke too, isn't it? This has to be a joke too. Oh my God, Trudy! Dorothy! Jack! How come you're alive? How come you're in bed with my husband? I asked you first! Now, honey, it's not what it looks like. Obviously! Dorothy thought I was dead, tried to comfort you, and the two of you got carried away. Okay, it is what it looks like. <laughs> I can't believe this. I was just playing a prank. Do you have any idea how I feel? I mean, what kind of person jumps into bed with her dearest friend's husband? Well, not necessarily a bad person. Sometimes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you were talking about <sighs> I think I'm gonna faint. Gotcha! <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. It suddenly occurred to me, what if this was the ultimate practical joke? So I dragged it out of Jack, and the two of us cooked up this time. That is amazing. Jack, I can't believe you went along with this. So I got in bed with Dorothy. It was a joke. Don't even think. <laughs> yeah, her big mouth. This is the most underhanded, She's sneaky, so proud. practical joke anyone She's has ever proud. made. And I have just one thing to say. Boy, have I missed you. Yes, she is. Yes. Trudy, I've missed you too. They have a special kind of relationship. Wait, just a minute. You two are not mad? Are you kidding? Our friendship was built on years of That's exactly what I said. Trudy, you have made this one hell of a reunion. I cannot believe you put Rose and me through this. Yeah. What are you talking about? You knew Trudy was playing a practical joke all along and you never shared it with your best friends. We thought you were devastated. Aww. We suffered right along with you. Yeah. That was insensitive. Insensitive. Selfish. Selfish. Listen, as far as we are concerned, Dorothy's Bornack, you have gone too far this time. No, this is unforgivable. We are never going to speak to you again. Right. <laughs> Uh -huh. Gotcha. Oh, yay! <laughs> very, very convincing, Black. Well, I can't take all the credit. I did have some help, right, Rose? Oh, no, Rose is mad for real. <laughs> Rose, is... Rose. Rose did not understand the assignment. She failed out of class. <laughs> All right, fam. So we just finished watching uh, The Golden Girls season four, episode 19, titled Till Death Do We Volley. This was a really good episode. We got to meet Trudy, which is um, one of uh, Dorothy's closest friends. They have this rivalry that they've had since high school, and we got to see it played out in jokes. And uh, it's funny because I think on YouTube, I just posted the artist where Sophia was was pulling practical jokes. And now we get to see Dorothy doing the same thing, but Dorothy being the master of it all. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I love seeing that because... Um, Everybody has different types of friendships. So yes, like our girls have their own type of friendship, but Dorothy has other friends and you got to see one of the good friendships of Dorothy's that is a little bit unconventional because as opposed to friends who will love on each other, they like to just like nip at each other and like, you know, tease each other, call each other names and like almost like Sophia does with Stan. <laughs> so, but it's still rooted in love because that's all that they've done and they've pulled practical jokes on each other. And that's kind of what makes them unique and makes them them. And, um, and it was nice to be able to see a different type of friendship on this show with one of our key girls who we're used to seeing how she deals with friendships with um, Rose and 
and uh, Blanche, but now we got to finally see her with somebody else and that, you know, she has different types of friendships and it works with, for her and it works for them. So it was really nice to be able to see that. And it kind of gives you a glimpse of what Dorothy was like in high school, which I really enjoyed. Um, so when it comes to this episode, because of the type of episode that it was, you guys will not be shocked at who my MVP was and my MVP is Dorothy. Dorothy for the win because again, she figured out um, very early on that um, tr uh, Judy, Trudy, Trudy was probably not dead. It was probably the a prank that she was trying to pull and then pulled her husband in to again, one up her in her prank and she hella did. So that's why my MVP goes to Dorothy this episode. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and let me know who your MVP pick would have been and why. And also, do you have a friend like Trudy that you like to, you know, tease and make fun of and, you know, have uh, pranks with, like prank wars with? Let me know. I would like to know a little bit more. Um, and again, thanks for joining and I'll see you guys on the next one. Mwah. Bye for now.